Hello and welcome to the program. I am Mary Kanu. As climate change continues to raise concerns on human survival, especially in the area of food security and good nutrition, there are predictions that Nigeria may face an even worse environmental and food production crisis. In Nigeria, 1 in 10 children die from hunger before the age of 5, and an estimated 25 million people are at risk of food insecurity, according to a report from the United Nations Children's Fund. Now, the disturbing figures from food insecurity has been met with concern from newly elected President Bola Tinubu, who declared a state of emergency on food insecurity. Crops are also now vulnerable to ever-changing weather conditions, and Nigerian smallholder farmers who produce some 90% of the country's food on unirrigated lands are mostly dependent on rainfalls which are either too heavy, resulting in flooding or a sparse rainfall. The effects of climate change on food production have now become very direct and substantial as Nigeria is ranked as the 53rd most vulnerable country and the sixth least country in the world to adapt to climate change. So how uh, mitigation methods can be adopted to reduce the effects of climate change and also ensure sufficient crop yields. Uh, let's speak to an environmentalist, John Ekoko, who joins me now on the program. It's good to have you join me. Now, it is no secret that our planet is facing a climate crisis, you know, which led to President Bola Tinubu declaring a state of emergency on food insecurity. So how exactly does climate change, you know, affect food production and what's the level of damage done to Nigeria's agricultural production value chain? Yeah, um, thank you very much. Now, the effect of climate change on food production is something that everyone is quite aware of. Recently, the UN Secretary General, he was saying the world has moved beyond climate change, right, or global warming to global boiling. And you know what global boiling will do to agriculture? Plants can just not grow in very hot conditions. Now, in Nigeria, we seem not to be aware yet that we ought to move from food feeding and fiber production to environmental conservation. We still plant as if we have the old art laid out before us like before. We have lost a large portion of it to the climate change effect. That's number two, the present regime has not shown enough appreciation of the problems of climate change and global warming. If I recall correctly, just before the current president was sworn in, he said nobody should tell me about climate change. If they must talk with him, they should bring money before we listen to them. What is the implication? Number one is that when you bring climate policies before him, he's not likely to give them the preference that they deserve. Number two is that there's a lot of socioeconomic vulnerabilities. One, from the effects of climate change. Two, from the resultant hostilities banditry, kidnapping, violent crimes. If you check, it has been very prevalent in the northern part of Nigeria. You know the cause? It is because of the effect of climate change. Extreme temperatures. Look at the large scale um, rainfall and flooding patterns, much more than before. These are the um, effects, environmental effects. Now, what about the hostilities that resulted from it? Farmers cannot go to farm again. Benue, that used to be the bread basket of the country, I don't know how much food they're able to grow now. It has even become a security problem. If the government is serious, you don't just declare state of emergency or whatever name you call it. 
without tackling the fundamentals. Number one, if we must tackle the problem of insecurity, then you must make the environment friendly for agricultural production. Because most of them are mainly farmers in the north. That's number one. Number two is that the security issue with half of the population living in, living in IDP camps, which type of agricultural production are you expecting? I thought it was going down, the banditry and kidnapping and terrorism. But recently, you are hearing what I hear. They go into villages, they kidnap 20, 30, they disappear into the... I'm even surprised that there's forest there. Who will be encouraged to go back to the farm when there's no promise of absolute security? The long and short is, the so-called imagination Agency is just a pronouncement. We need action to back it up. I can't see that action yet. So I cannot appraise what the president has said. We may need to give him like six months to do that. Then the will now start looking at how we can now enhance agricultural production by looking at environmental conservation. We cannot talk of conservation yet because we are still barely struggling to feed, to provide food and provide fiber. That much I can say for now. All right, so does this mean, uh, you know, that um, with the worsening climate crisis, you envisage an increase in food prices, you know, and decrease in food availability? Is, we, we are not envisaging now, we are experiencing it. Food prices have gone over the roof. Tomatoes that used to be very cheap. You'll be shocked. Are you with me? That something of 200 naira has gone to 2,000 naira. In fact, for a lot of households, the, the monthly pay cannot feed them again. We are in a crisis situation. I am I'm repeating it again. A lot of households... In fact, there's no more middle class. Apart from the super rich, for about 80% of Nigerians, even on 90%, their take-home pay cannot feed them. So getting out of it, we just must, like I said earlier, go back to environmental conservation. And if I need to say a bit more, how do you want to farm in arid areas without irrigation? How do you want to farm without improved species of seeds? that can withstand drought, that can min conserve the water requirement to the barest minimum. You know about the Great Green World Project. You don't do them in three months. No, all over the world, technology has led the revolution in agricultural production. Nigeria must toe that line. Our subsistence farming of the past cannot sustain us. That is the truth. And you know, most of our farming is subsistence based. How many plantation or mechanized farms do we have? How many? And the access roads to the farm up till today is still closed. The roads are horrible. The vehicles are totally um, dilapidated. And with the problem of a uh, fuel price now, the, 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 the food products get to the market at very exorbitant prices. These things take coordinated planning, not ad hoc. You know, uh, how do you put it now? Either brinkmanship or showmanship. No, you don't need that. The regime has not persuaded me yet that they understand the seriousness of the problem in this country. Well, the ministers have just been sworn in. Let's give them time. Let's hope that the new minister of Agri understands what is required and is ready to take the necessary step. I can tell you for free, the Minister of Environment and the various agencies, hydrological, NEMA, you name them, they stand by to assist. And you know very well, there's a lot of prediction ability today. 
whether rain, whether aridity, whether drought, water, which can be used for planning. I think we need to step up our planning. That's what we don't have yet, right? So the food prices are, we are not envisaging, we are experiencing them. I hope we don't start eating, men don't start eating one another, right? We, I hope we don't start to cannibalism, the way things are going. But that is my, my honest opinion to you. All right. Uh, in Nigeria and in Africa, you know, in general, most rural areas are largely dependent on firewood to make their food, which causes air pollution and health related issues. How do we even begin to combat this? You know, bearing in mind that not everyone can afford the, uh, the alternative energy sources for cooking. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, by now, we shouldn't be using wood to cook again. All things being equal. I think it's quite sad that we are still doing so. But the way forward is that we need to train both the rural farmers and even the urban farmers on what I call green skills. Do you understand? We need to train them in green skills for a sustainable future. We need to give them environmental education. We need to give them sustainability principles. In 2014, Jonathan tried to uh, provide, is it solar cooker, solar lamp? 2013, 2014, I don't know that you are aware. I wish you had continued with it, right? And the things were brought in at a rock bottom. I think it was 9,000 or so. And the government was willing to even subsidize the cost for that, just to allow everybody, you know, become environmentally compliant. Well, we all know the problem of Nigeria. Whether it is corruption, I don't know what it is. Fantastic project as it sounded, it never took off. People did not get those uh, solar cookers or, you know, environmental cookers that will not use wood. And it was supposed to be based on the abundant natural resources found in the different regions. I must confess to you, I think our problems are beyond the environment itself. It is governance and the will of government to actually move with the current times. They are not willing yet. When they are, the farmers will show up. And with the prices of things today, how, how are you going to tell the farmer not to use wood? Leave the environmental effects aside. How will you, how will you be able to afford the alternatives? I don't, I can't see any way out yet. So we have a big problem on our hands in that they use um, local wood to do their cooking and their heating. And it causes a lot of health challenges, uh, lung problems, heart problems, blood problems. But still, we do not have alternatives. And that is the real concern that I have. Well, we have to go on a break now. Let's go on a break. The conversation will continue after this break. Stay with us. All right, thank you for staying with us. Food prices have skyrocketed in recent times due to many reasons, but the removal of fuel subsidy and climate change are major contributing factors. An environmentalist, John Ekoko, has been speaking on the challenges uh, that are ahead if mitigation methods are not put in place. So, um, you know, Africa accounts for about 2% to 3% of greenhouse emissions. And globally, uh, we see major economies and industries constantly ignore scientific warnings of climate disasters and neglect uh, their climate promises. So 
Is it safe to assume that the key industry players are major contributors to the climate crisis? Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, let me put it like this again. The major industry players and the advanced countries, while they are quite aware of the implication of climate change and global warming, they are finding a way to push the burden of compliance to the developing countries and the fringe players in the industry who do not um, either affect the environment or who do not, you know, release carbon the way the major players do. And the issue is a balancing of economic interest. What they have done is to try to bring up units to measure the level of carbon emission and try to trade it off with the less polluting nations and industries so as to encourage them not to pollute as much as the big players and they get compensated So you'll find out that when their own interest is affected, what they do is to make sure that they can keep producing without tilting the balance and restrict developing countries and small industries from producing and uh, polluting the environment or increasing the global warming, what the UN Secretary General has called global boiling. So they are guilty, no doubt, but they are making everybody complicit. Because they are saying that, yes, we are ready to pay you not to increase the global warming while you allow us to continue with the global warming. So I think we'll get to the tipping point, and we are very, very close to it, when we'll now find out that giving bailouts will not solve the problem on ground. Both the big and the small must find ways to cut back on their carbon emission. And I think we're getting there. So that is just the way it is. They are seeking license to keep on <clears throat> emitting carbon and they want to prevent the developing countries and the small industries from doing the same. Calculating the amount of carbon emission and the element of trade that will satisfy the small industries and the developing countries. Up till now, they don't have the balance yet. That is just the truth. So, the emission is still going on at a very rampant rate. And the UN Secretary said, talked about global boiling. I pray we don't get to global boiling. I think by then they will know what to do. That much I can say for now. So let's let's talk about solutions now. In the face of excess flooding, you know, just as we witnessed in 2022, what mitigation methods can be adopted to prevent damage to farmlands and uh, and uh, also crop yields? Yes, this issue of flooding it has been with us since 1948 when the first major flood occurred in Nigeria in recent times. It has always been a surprise to me that as we talk up till today, nothing much has been done. Yes, um, the Ecological Fund was set up in the regime of Jonathan. 
but it has become another tool in the political game. But going forward, what should we do? Number one, ecological issues are not minor issues. They are major issues. In other words, they require a lot of resources to deal with. First and foremost, we must comply with building regulations. We must clear our drains. We must not build on landfalls. We must control our waste. Those ones are very busy. Going forward, what about our coastal regions? The marshlands are the lungs of the earth, if not the heart, H E R U T, of the earth. Are we preserving these marshlands, these, uh, you know, regions between the sea and, uh, you know, the dwelling places? They act as sponge. They absorb most of the water coming from the sea. But what do we see today? The people build on this marshland. They build on this coastal corridor. Even the green belt itself is brought down. We need to be able to restore that green belt, that marshy land, to be able to act as a sponge to absorb the water from the sea whenever the, the, the tide rises. It is because it is not being absorbed today. That is why farmlands are being eroded, are being overflooded. Number two, there are a lot of um, habitats by the coastal area which actually, you know, harbors a lot of marine life. Many of them also play a role in stabilizing the level of the seawater to prevent it. You have the coral nest. You have the pyramids that's built up. What do we see today? overfishing, destruction of these marine lives around the coastal area. It shouldn't be. We need to go back to building it up and preserving it. It makes for good tourism and it makes for uh, environmental conservation. If we do not do that, we are, we are creating an expressway from the sea to the interland where people dwell and where famine is carried out. Nothing, I repeat, nothing can prevent overflooding of the farmlands. Just look back, a few years back, whoever talked about overflooding of farmland? The surprising thing I hear today is that they say, oh, the government has drilled the channel. It is after drilling the channel that the flooding becomes more rampant. Who does that? Definitely we have not gotten it yet. We have not. If you want to actually demarcate the waterways, use solid bond walls, solid concrete. Number three, it's not been done yet. So what you see is that the channel easily gets, um, you know, blocked. And the water runs out of the bounds. I think we need to go back to the drawing board. The problems are very easy, but the solutions are not simple. Let's admit that. And they require a lot of resources. The government must be ready to lead. And the issue is that once you start 
and you start to get the answers, the results. Oh, it's a natural process. It accelerates by itself. But somebody must start. That much I can say. All right, uh, John Ekoko, environmentalist, thank you very much for your time and your contribution. Well, that's our program for today. Thank you very much for watching. I am Mary Kanu.